Yo, what's good guys? This is Chris from WearTesters.com. Welcome to the WearTesters.com official YouTube channel, the only channel on YouTube for sneakers, where you come for the review and stay for the conversation. Now today what we're gonna be looking at is something brand new from Under Armour Running. This is called the Hover Infinite. This is one of five sneakers that is coming out uh, available on February 1st and they are going to be all connected. So connected means that they are compatible with the something that you're familiar with, Mrs. Wing over there, and it's the Map My Run app. Yep. So these guys right here all come with a Bluetooth piece of technology embedded within the midsole. I believe they said that they were all in the right shoe, which is kind of weird. Well, you only need a chip in one. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I guess it's not weird at all. And basically they are uh, synced up or you sync them up to your app. And it's really cool because it actually knows what shoe you're running in. What? Yes, it was super it was super cool when they like went through the little like rundown of like how you do it. But so what you can see right here is again the Hover Infinite right there in the center. They also have the Hover Guardian, the Velocity 2, the Sonic 2, which was a very popular model last year, along with the Phantom SE. Again, the Phantom last year was very popular as well, and the SE is the brand new version. So all of these runners are catering to a different style or need of running, which I think is awesome. I think that basketball could take notes from this as far as marketing is concerned is that when you're looking at a running shoe they are very specific on what type oh yeah of shoe this is for running like what kind of tempo or whatever it is right so like for example the guardian it was explained that that is a shoe with additional support features for pronation that's awesome and it's very straightforward we don't get that same stuff in basketball they really do heavily tie things to players instead i was gonna say didn't adidas used to do that when they actually did did when they got rid of the signature stuff with Howard it was not just with Howard it was with all of their they had five athletes at the time and they including Howard and Rose is before each of them had their own signatures and they did away with the signature line for I think it was a couple of seasons and what they had instead was the TS line which was the commander and the creator the creator being the point guard shoe or the guard shoe and the, the commander being the big guy shoe and they were both very similar as far as attributes go the traction tooling both had like pure motion or adiprene and it was very interesting and I thought that that was really cool. I think that basketball is lacking this type of upfront marketing. Everything is very much hidden. They want you to just buy. Running is different. Running is a sport of need and runners are very meticulous. We're super picky. Like I think you guys might be the pickiest of footwear consumers. Face it, all you have is just trying to fight distractions. Yes. So if there's anything uncomfortable, it just makes it 10 times more... More noticeable yes. and miserable. Yes. Yeah, and that's where I think, again, this should be applied, in my opinion. If you have a different opinion, feel free to let us know uh, in the comment section, but I feel like basketball needs this. So this shoe right here, the Infinite, is more of kind of like an every person shoe. It's got a lot of cushion. It's got enough support. Midsole is stacked a little bit high, but then there's also a, a significant like heel to toe drop. So all of this stuff I'm not 100% familiar with. I get most of it just because a lot of these features again are used on basketball models, but I'm not a runner myself. That's actually my wife's thing. I really don't like running at all, but she's trying to convince me to do a, uh, like a vlog series of like test these out and go running with her, which I don't really want to do, but I'll let you guys decide. So if you guys want to see some Something like that then you guys are gonna have to like smash the like button hit subscribe share the video leave comments you know do the YouTube thing and let us know because otherwise I'm not gonna do it I want a running partner a couple times a week get them to do it guys I don't want I don't, I don't know hmm. we'll just take you out for a little three milers it'll be fine oh yo my legs right now <laughs> feel so bad but these guys are made for me basically as a runner or just kind of like your basic type of runner. It's got a little bit of everything. Again, the other shoes are more geared towards specific style of running. The Sonic 2 is more of a speed style racer. The Phantom is kind of like that, like really long distance. You need a ton of cushion and all that stuff. So those ones have like the most thick midsole uh, cushion aspects. And then the Velocity 2 is a tempo trainer. What the hell does that even mean? Speed training. So th when they explain this to me, I don't really get this, but maybe you understand it. It says uh, light and snappy ride. So snappy means toe flex, like spring. Probably. Oh, you mean you don't even know? I don't buy shoes for tempo runs. I perked up when you were talking about the longer distance. 
Oh, so you'd be in, more interested in the Phantom? Mm -hmm. Gotcha. I do like that you were saying that the app knows what shoe you're wearing because that's mm -hmm. something that I'll do is when I get a new shoe, I'll put a date on the midsole. To know how many miles you put to on To know it. roughly like how long I've been in them. That's actually something that Tiffany Beers does where she'll mark how many miles. That's cool. Which but I think is pretty interesting. I'm sure she runs in multiple. Well, I'm more of a, I've found something I like. Correct, yeah. So, And I think that that's really cool for what she does. I think that's a dope way to track specifics. I've ran in these 30 miles or whatever it is. So, But yeah, they do link up to the app. They do link up with the specific shoe, which is interesting because it literally tracks everything from your tempo to your gait to your time and speed. And then that way you can adjust or train to, to do better or longer or whatever it might be. And something I think is very interesting about that is that by doing that per shoe, you can kind of test to see if these things are marked marketing or not. So in a speedy shoe like the Sonic, would your time be increased slightly? In something like the Phantom, which they s describe as the sport edition, so it's like the sports car, like a luxury mm -hmm. version versus the Sonic, which is like the race car. It would be interesting to see the stats on somebody that runs consistently to see like if their times are different depending on the footwear that they're using. As far as tech specs on this particular shoe, most of the shoes are very similar in which that they all use hover cushion and that's the, the midsole right here, which you can see with the netting. The reason why that there's netting on that is because hover is so elastic or bouncy. And so the netting on that kind of like keeps it under control. And then what I think is interesting is that they've exposed this top line, which they did not do on any of last year's model. All they had were these little cutouts and then the heel wedge. And instead they've really exposed that hover and then placed underneath it a firmer carrier which is made up of charge cushions. The charge foam, uh, if you play basketball, you know that from the Curry line. If you are familiar with Under Armour's running stuff, they used to use charged as their main cushion source but like i've explained many times before names on foams are just names and it's all about the compound or the mixture and so you can have charged feel bouncy if they want it to or they can have charged feel firm just depends because either way they're going to call it charged because that's their proprietary name that's their like their trademark and then underneath all of this stuff you have two different types of rubber which i think is interesting you have blown rubber throughout which is the orange stuff which i actually don't know what that is do you know what that is no i laughed when i was reading it i was hoping you would be able to tell me what it was no so i actually don't know what that is i assume that it's softer and that maybe it has a little bit more of a, a bite to it on concrete i'm not really sure and then the black section is a high abrasion rubber which you can actually feel is firmer so there's definitely a density difference between the two They've got it placed in sections here with, I don't know if you guys remember their older stuff, the seamless shoe mm -hmm. that used the, um, what was the, the one piece? The Curry 2s have it. Speed form? Speed fit? It is speed form. So it was the one piece construction made in the bra factories or their fabric factories of their apparel. And they made like a one piece, including the underneath. Remember that? So there wasn't like a removable insole. Is that why my toe got chewed up by those shoes? Um, I don't know. I just think that they didn't fit your feet. You have wide feet. They weren't on a wide last. Mm. That simple. These shoes right here, the upper on this would fit your foot a lot nicer. This actually will allow for toe splaying. Mm -hmm. So that's where Under Armour being a new brand has excelled, which I don't think a lot of people give them enough credit for they have really excelled in their learning of making footwear so mistakes that they made nine years ago they're no longer making now when it comes to running those uppers the speed form uppers they were one piece they were a little firm but they were still lightweight and they were still flexible and the problem with that though is that they molded it around a specific foot shape or last which is not everybody's and that's where materials like this come into play where you have a, a lightweight mesh it's very flexible it's breathable on top of that something important for running because you are distance running more often than not and on top of that again toe splaying is when you strike out your forefoot and then your toes are naturally supposed to spread and kind of grip and then propel you into your stride and some shoes that are very tight fitting don't allow that and on top of that in sport doesn't matter what sport it is you swell yes the feet are probably the first thing to do it because they are taking all the brunt of your force plus gravity so when you run each step is two to four times your body weight which is crazy because of gravity so me being me even though i'm small every step is two to four times which is heavier than the average human and imagine that for both basketball and running because everything that i think of is in terms of basketball everything that you think of is in terms of running to have something like this a applied to the game of basketball is interesting, which is where the Curry, coincidentally enough, where the Curry 6 comes in, where they built this shoe. To mimic. 
running. They have basketball specifics on there, which are great. They're like, these are way more restrictive in movement, especially torsional movement than something like this, because this I can, you know, maneuver a little bit more than this, which I can't. It's very, very interesting that you can apply these things, which is why I say uh, a lot of shoe companies and a lot of tech features are tested out first. You can tell me the one that isn't. I don't care. That's great that that one was not, but the majority, 99% of things are tested out in running footwear, mm -hmm. period. It's a fact. Ask any brand, ask any designer, ask any development person in any brand, and they will tell you the same thing, is that most of the time they are testing things out first in running so that they can then apply it to a basketball shoe. Period. This is not a debate. It's not an opinion. It's a fact. Now, as far as fit is concerned, these guys do fit true to size. Again, there's just enough width in here to allow for some stretch or some uh, swelling while you're on your run. Something that is not a performance feature, but I think is very cool is the actual insole itself, the graphic on it actually. And it just says the stack height. So you can see the uh, type of heel to toe drop. It's 29 millimeters in the heel, and then it drops down to 21 in the forefoot. And then the size of the shoe is on there, which is super super cool and it also has the weight in both grams and ounces because some people do one or the other you know what I mean so I think it's really cool and then it just lets you know that it's Bluetooth compatible and all of that stuff and they said that this was a PU even though it looks like ortholite to me but it's a lot more dense I did not know that polyurethane could look like this if that is true then I think that's very cool and also underneath there the strobel is another cushion source even though it's only a couple of millimeters thick but it's still an additional layer but everything is super lightweight which you can literally see on the insole it's 10 ounces almost 11 and I just think it's a very cool shoe I think the entire running lineup for Under Armour is very very cool as far as performance is concerned I think as far as visuals or aesthetics is concerned I think the Sonic 2 is probably my favorite looking although I do like the way that the, the Phantom SE looks but not in every colorway I've seen multiple colorways of them so far and some of them I like some of them I don't I've said plenty of times though that colorways make or break a shoe as far as like performance goes though I do think that this one is probably going to be the one besides the Sonic I think the Sonic might, might be like most people's favorites. But let us know what you guys think about these down below in the comment section. Are you into running shoes? Are you not? If you are, what do you use them for? I know a lot of people, like especially there's like books on this where running shoes are considered dad shoes, the original dad shoe. And they're light, they're comfortable, they're breathable, all that stuff. But now dad shoes are a trend and they definitely are not looking like this. They're bulky, they're heavy, they're layered, all that stuff. Let me know what you guys like use running shoes for. Do you actually run in them? Do you train in them? Do you just wear them casually because they're comfortable? Let us know down below in the comment section. Again, if you want us to do some kind of, I don't really want to, I don't even want to speak this into existence, but if you would like to see some kind of random running vlog, which I have not done since the original energy boost, let me know down below in the comment section. We might just take care of that for you. Thank you guys once again for watching. Thanks for all the support. And until next time guys, have a good one.